Yeah. So, all of them work as hard as enough. One of the Maryland has been in, uh, in business for over 150, almost 150 years, I should say. And you know that if you would have attended the origin story that was presented two days ago by our cruise and travel director. Um, we're also the recognized leader in the premium sector of the cruise industry, and it didn't happen overnight. Uh, we started out about 150 years ago as a small cargo company. We uh, were based in the Netherlands, and then somewhere we moved to New York City, where we opened up an office, and nowadays we are operating out of Seattle, Washington. Of course. Mm -hmm. We are the, uh, uh, known for our impeccable service and also the intuitive way we treat our guests and hopefully you've seen a little bit of that already. Nothing? <laughs> oh, it's been great. Yeah. Proud. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but our fleet has grown to 15, 14 ships, I should say. We actually have a 15 ship under construction and that uh, ship will be called the Rheindam. She's presently built uh, in Italy at the Vincenzeria, just north of Venice. And if everything goes well, uh, she will be introduced to our fleet in May of 2021, and we are very, very excited to see her in our fleet. Well, you're not sailing on the uh, Rheindam, you're sailing on the Zuiderdam. Now, the Zuiderdam was built in 2002 at the same yard in Italy, and she has uh, three sister ships, the Oosterdam, the Westerdam, and the Nordam. Now, all four ships are named after the four compass points. Uh, so I like that. I, I find it very well fitting because Alt American truly travels all over the globe. Uh, we travel as far north as the Arctic. As a matter of fact, this ship uh, crossed the Arctic Circle in uh, October of last year, and this year we will once again cross the Arctic Circle in September and October. We travel as far south as the Antarctic, and Holland's Maritime actually has two ships down there at the moment. Uh, we travel to the Far East, the, the Central Europe, Western Europe, everything in between, all the way down to New England and Canada, and even to the Caribbean, where you are now. Right? Now, I do get asked every cruise, how can I make the most of my cruise experience? It's fairly simple. We split it up in on board and ashore but most importantly is staying healthy right so what i'd like you to do is i'd like you to wash your hands a lot and when i mean a lot is when you go to the bathroom uh, go inside your cabin come out of your cabin go to eat come back from eating just keep washing your hands washing your hands is the best defense also make use of the dispensers we see throughout the ship they are effective, but they do not replace hand washing. Right? Now let's start with that. Now traveling really is an experience. It's an adventure. Uh, it is an opportunity for you to learn a little bit about the places we visit, uh, immerse yourself a little bit in that culture, make friends, uh, have fun, but most of all, savor every little part of the journey you're on. Now on board, you do that by just enjoying the beauty, the comfort, and the elegance of what the Zyderum has to offer you. We have open deck spaces. Still, we're one of the few lines where you still have a lot of open and wooden teak decks. Um, spend some time outside. Just hang over the rail, have a look what sea life is out there. There's always birds. There is uh, sometimes we see dolphin, we see turtle, shark. There is a lot and a lot out there. If we see a whale, I will announce it. Chances are very slim. I haven't seen a whale in this part of the world in many, many years, but you just never know. Um, interior too. There's a lot here. Uh, we have beautiful spaces. Uh, for instance, the uh, uh, gallery bar. I like to call it the uh, living room of the Zuiderdam. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, what else can you do on board? We can have a culinary experience on board. You can have, uh, for instance, room service. It's a great way to start the day. It may take a little bit to get your food, but you can also eat at the Lido Market. And in the evening at the Lido Market, we have uh, a restaurant that's called the Canaletto. It's an Italian-inspired uh, food and wines out there. You can eat in the main dining room, or you can eat at the Pinnacle Grill, where we offer a menu that's based on the Pacific Northwest. So Pacific Northwest food and wines. 
Monza Cruz at the Pinnacle Grill, we offer Rudy Seldomer. And Rudy Seldomer is a pop-up restaurant with a menu that was created by Rudy Seldomer. And Rudy Seldomer is our master chef. And it's a menu that's based on the Côte d'Azur. So, really nice place to eat. Ooh, um, really good food, so I hope you make some time and eat at the Pinnacle Grill as well. Um, what else can we do here on board? Enrich yourself. We have lots of entertainment. Like uh, for instance, here at the main stage, we do some presentations that are hosted by uh, our cruise observer director Stephanie. She did the origin story, but I think we have a story about Caribbean rum and uh, some other um, stories that she does here. You can also go, for instance, to uh, the uh, Crow's Nest or the Exploration Center at the Crow's Nest. It's a destination-focused area. Uh, we have interactive displays. We have a destination-focused library out there. So if you want to learn a little bit, want to see the, see the places you're going to visit and explore a little bit in advance, then you can do that down there. We also have our short excursions out there. It's really nice, a uh, nice place. And there's always someone there that can help you if you have a question. Yeah. Here at the main stage, uh, we have entertainment tonight. We have the runaround kids. That is correct. Yeah. Very nice show. Um, so enjoy that tonight. But if you walk a little further back, you come at the dueling pianos, uh, where we have billboard on board. I uh, hope you enjoy that. We'll walk a little further back, and then we have the BB Kings All-Star Band playing at the BB Kings Club. Go a little further back even, and then we come at Lincoln Center Stage. Now, Lincoln Center Stage uh, offers a group of musicians from Lincoln Center in New York. Uh, they're all classically trained musicians, so we're very fortunate that we have some of them here on board that can perform for you. I think that's it for on board. No, going ashore, equally important. Savor that part. <coughs> Immerse yourself in the Caribbean culture, and the heritage, have a culinary experience. For instance, explore the Dutch snacks on the Dutch islands. That's always fun. <laughs> um, but the best way of learning a little bit and enjoying the places you're going to visit is by going on tour. Because generally speaking, the areas we will be docking are not directly downtown. They're fairly close to downtown, but that's just it. You don't see much of the country. So you really need to go out and explore. Now, you can do it several ways. If you have friends, for instance, in Panama, no, that is not a good example. If you have, <laughs> if you have friends in, let's say, Willemstad, West friends here in Willemstad. I thought so, not very many. <laughs> All right. So if you would have had them, you could call them, of course, and you could go with them. But um, another option is going on an independent tour. You're more than welcome to do that. Uh, but I would recommend going with a ship's organized tour, a shore excursion uh, from Holland to America. And for the very simple reason that all of our tours are vetted for safety and security. But most importantly, they ensure you are back on time. Mm -hmm. uh, we cannot wait in some of these ports. We, will, we really need to leave on time. Uh, because, for instance, Carihena, we got to depart as soon as we can because we want to make that canal slot in the Panama Canal. So, if we know where you are, as in you're on tour with us, then we, generally speaking, can wait and will wait. And if not, we make alternate arrangements for you. But if you're on an independent tour and I have no idea where you are, I cannot wait, unfortunately. Let me think. Some more tips. Ah, yeah. If there, let me give you a few insights on where I would like to go. Um, if there are any ports, I would really enjoy going up. Of course, Cartagena. Cartagena is fantastic, and we only there for a short time. Mm -hmm. But Panama Canal and in Costa Rica. Now, Panama Canal, a lot of people think they have to stay on board in the Panama Canal because we're going to visit the Panama Canal. And let me explain how that day is going to work. We're going to go through the breakwater somewhere between 5 o'clock and 5.30. We get the pilot on board. We go through the locks, the cartoon locks, and then we end up in the lake where we anchor and we dispatch our short excursions. Then we go back through the same locks and then we go outside the breakwaters and go into Cologne where we embark our tours. Now, in Cologne itself, there is not really anything to do. There are little shops out there, but that's it. You don't have the time to go on tour by yourself in Cologne, because we don't really know when we arrive, generally speaking. Sometimes we arrive at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, sometimes at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. It depends on all that whole schedule. But I wouldn't recommend 
uh, going ashore on tour in Cologne by yourself. We don't even offer tours down there for that very particular reason. But in Panama, there is so much more to see than just the canal. Um, they have indigenous villages that you can visit. There is uh, Panama City, of course, that you can visit. Uh, if you wanted to see the whole canal, you can do that. Uh, we have trains and we have actually boats that go all the way through the canal. So there is a lot to do in the Panama Canal than just the few walks you are going to see. So I highly recommend going, waking up, see the, the, the Panama Canal through the ship, and then going on tour once we're in the lake. Same goes for Costa Rica, Puerto Limon. Puerto Limon is, uh, is an industrious place. We're basically docking at a container port or an ex-container port. But if you want to see a little bit of Costa Rica, you really have to go and explore. Uh, Costa Rica has a lot to offer. It's fantastic out there. You have monkeys. <laughs> and any day with a monkey is a good day. Uh, yep. But there is... Uh, there is a lava tubing, if I'm not mistaken, there is a zip lines, there is a, a jungle out there that you can visit, so there's a lot and a lot to do. So take those opportunities and enjoy what all these ports have to offer you. Now I think I've given you away all my secrets, so time for a toast. <laughs> Let's raise a glass to an adventure of a lifetime, a cruise of a lifetime, everything you expected from it, and then some. Cheers! Cheers! Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Bart Bartis! Yeah. And what a lovely way to end our day. Did you guys have a good time today? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great, because I think you're going to have an even better time tomorrow as we arrive in Aruba. I had to double check to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, just so you know, we're going to arrive in Aruba, what we would call later. It's a late arrival, meaning everybody's probably going to be up. It's going to be around 1 o'clock, so we're going to have a couple of events uh, scattered throughout the morning to keep you entertained. One of the first things we are going to have is our port.